Uh, myself Punya Murthy from IIT Gauhati. I welcome you to IIT Fall program. In this class, we will study about alkynes. Alkynes are hydrocarbons that contain at least one carbon carbon triple bond. Example, ethane and they have general formula C n H 2 n minus 2. In the previous classes we have seen about alkanes, alkenes. This is a saturated hydrocarbon and if you look at this one, they have general formula C n H 2 n plus 2. Next we have seen about alkenes, they are also unsaturated hydrocarbons and it has, they have uh, at least one carbon carbon double bond. They have general formula C n H 2 n and if you compare uh, these three hydrocarbons. Um, alkanes have uh, less number of hydrogen atoms. For example, in this case you have 2 carbon 6 hydrogen atoms, uh, in this case you have uh, 4 hydrogen atoms, here only you have the 2 hydrogen atoms. So, they have general formula C n H 2 n minus 2. So, let us see the structure of uh, uh, the carbon carbon triple bond. If you uh, look at the orbital structure of this uh, molecule, so this each carbon and this has two sp uh, hybrid orbital uh, which involve the bond formation and uh, the overlapping of one sp orbital of this carbon with another sp hybrid orbital of this carbon uh, leads to the formation of the sigma bond. So, out of the two sp orb hybrid orbital one is involved the formation of carbon carbon bond. The remaining sp hybrid orbital overlaps with this S orbital of hydrogen to form the carbon hydrogen sigma bond. Similarly, this uh, sp hybridized orbital of this carbon can overlap with this hydrogen S orbital of hydrogen to form this carbon hydrogen sigma bond. There are two unhybrid p orbital and the one of this p orbital of this carbon, for example, this one, the unhybrid p orbital can overlap with the p orbital of this carbon. Uh, these two orbitals parallel and they can overlap side on approach, they can form the carbon uh, the by bond. So, overlapping of these two p orbitals, unhybrid p orbitals results the formation of this by bond. 
there is one more unhybridized p orbital that is perpendicular to this orbital. So, this uh, carbon 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 hydrogen sigma bond all on the uh, uh, say linear uh, molecule and perpendicular to that you have the p orbital they overlap um, then they make uh, the result the formation of the bi bond in perpendicular to that p orbital you have another p orbital so this can overlap with this orbital this Uh, this orbital can overlap with this one. So, if you look at this one, this is uh, this is perpendicular to that uh, 90 degree between these two orbitals, they can make another bi bond. So, if you look at this one, it has three sigma bonds, one carbon carbon sigma bond, you have one carbon carbon sigma bond and two carbon hydrogen sigma bond. In addition to that, you have two bi bonds. These bi bonds are formed by the overlapping of these two unhybridized p orbitals. So, if you look at, uh, it's like cylindrical, right? You have the top. And bottom you have the bi electron cloud. Similarly, this side you have the bi electron cloud, and like completely this uh, molecule, and around that there is a bi electron cloud that makes this molecule as a linear. If you see the bond angle between this carbon carbon bond and uh, CH bond is 180 degree, the bond length is 1.2 Armstrong. The shorter than carbon carbon double bond, carbon carbon single bond, and this bond length is 1.09 Armstrong. Uh, this is a structure of alkyne, and uh, we have taken uh, ethane as an example. We have seen the structure, and it uh, involves the um, uh, sp hybridized orbital of carbon overlaps with. Uh, S orbital hydrogen to give uh, to form the carbon hydrogen sigma bond and uh, similarly this sp hybridized orbital of this carbon overlaps with this carbon sp hybridized orbital and head on approach to uh, form the sigma bond. Now, let us uh, look at uh, the nomenclature and isomerism of alkynes. In the IUPAC system, the names of alkynes are derived from the corresponding alkanes by replacing the suffix A N E with Y N E. For examples, the corresponding alkane is this is IUPAC name of this molecule is alkane is this is the first member of this alkane series. IUPAC name of this alkyne is ethane. The corresponding alkane is ethane. If you look at it, the suffix A N E has been replaced by Y N E. Let us look at the next example. So, IUPAC name of this alkyne is propyne, the corresponding alkane is propane. So, the first two uh, members of this series have only one structure. Alkane, um, ethane, propane, 
ethene, propene, and ethyne, propyne. When you go for uh, next member, butyne, There are two structures possible uh, in the case of butane. You can look at this one and this is called but 1 butane and do, uh, 2 butane. This is IUPAC name of these compounds and this 1 and 2 refers the position of the triple bond present in this molecule. When you go for the next molecule having molecular formula C 5 H 8. There are three possible structures. There are three possible structures. So, so these two compounds differ in their position of the double bonds. So, name of this compound is pent two pentane and this one is pent one pentane and this compound Three methyl one butyne. So, if you see these structures, these two are uh, this uh, positional isomers. If you see here the carbon carbon triple bond present under different positions. In this case, present between the carbon 1 and 2, here between the carbon C, uh, 2 and 3, therefore, this uh, relationship between these two uh, compounds are called positional isomers. And similarly, in this case, the double bond, the triple bond present between this carbon 1 and 2, here 2 and 3, these two are called positional isomers. And if you uh, compare these two compounds, this is a linear, this is a branched one. The relationship between these two uh, compounds is chain isomers. Similarly, between this and this chain isomers, because this is a linear, this is a branched one. This is about the isomerism. They can have, they have all look at it, they have same molecular formula, but different structures. So, these are linear structures. And uh, so, they differ in the position of the uh, triple bond, then they are called positional isomers. But when you compare with this one, then they are called chain isomers. This is the branched one, this is the linear one. So, next let us look at the preparation of alkynes.
There are two common methods are used to prepare alkynes and the first approach uh, the is the reaction of calcium carbide with water. When you react, when you treat calcium carbide with water, it can give uh, acetylene, uh, ethene So, this industry uses to prepare uh, ethane uh, by using this method because this is one of the uh, important um, alkynes uh, in the because we widely use for uh, uh, so ethane to make uh, new organic compounds as well as to make materials and this very important uh, industrial process. When we treat uh, calcium carbide with uh, water it can give acetylene and uh, this uh, ethene acetylene is a common name. And this is, uh, is a solid compound, it is a solid compound solid compound when you treat with uh, water you can generate um, um, ethane as gas. And calcium carbi carbide is uh, produced from calcium carbonate when you heat calcium carbonate. It can produce calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide. When you react calcium oxide with the carbon, you generate calcium um, carbide and uh, carbon monoxide. Here uh, involves two molecules of uh, water. So, you can generate uh, you can uh, this is the reaction is involved calcium carbonate is when you heat it produces calcium oxide and uh, this calcium oxide when you react with uh, carbon you generate the uh, calcium carbide uh, this when you treat with water you can produce um, ethane gas. So, how industry uses to prepare um, ethane. The next uh, approach common approach to prepare uh, ethane is um, uh, dehydro uh, dehalogenation reactions. For example, if you have for example, this one dihalo uh, compound So, this uh, when you treat uh, this 1 to dibromo alkane with uh, alcoholic KOH, it is a base. So, it can uh, remove this hydrogen, this is a base, it can remove one of the hydrogen. For example, if you remove this hydrogen, you generate let us write like this the base can remove proton So, in this case the base will remove this proton.
you generate the alkenyl bromide or called vinyl bromide intermediate. Once you form this one, you have to further react with a strong base. This uh, uh, you produce uh, this alkene plus potassium bromide plus water. This will be the byproduct in these reactions. And um, so, once you form this one, the potassium, uh, the hydroxide, the alcoholic KOH is not sufficient enough to remove this proton, right. Now, you have to uh, remove this proton. So, you have to use strong base like sodamide, and this can, uh, this now NH2, this the base, this can remove proton. Another dehydrohalogenation you can product. Basically, it involves two steps. First, what you have to do in this the byproduct is going to be sodium bromide plus ammonia. So, first the alkali here which removes one of the uh, proton, it is actually a base, you do dehydrohalogenation and further you have to use strong base to remove proton from this uh, alkenyl bromide then you can convert into alkyne. This is another process we use to make alkynes. So far we have seen um, the structure of carbon-carbon uh, triple bond, then nomenclature, isomerism, then preparation of alkynes. We have seen two approaches, one is how you can industry prepares. Uh, ethane gas using from calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate when you heat and it, it, um, it gives carbon, carbon, uh, calcium oxide, the calcium oxide can be reacted with car, uh, car, carbon, uh, so carbon to give calcium carbide. That calcium carbide when you treat with water, it can produce uh, ethane gas. And the next we have seen, if you have uh, vicinal dihalo compound, you can treat with base first alcoholic KOH, you can convert into vinyl uh, halide that can be further reacted with a strong base, then you can get the alkyne. Next, uh, physical properties of alkyne. As we have seen in the previous classes about alkanes and alkenes, the first uh, three uh, members of the series, uh, ethane, propyne, butyne, they are gas. The next eight members C5 to C13, C5, HA2, they are liquid. So, next 8 members are liquid compounds, after that all are solid compounds, higher molecular uh, uh, alkynes, they are solid compounds, uh, they are colorless as uh, alkanes and alkenes colorless. Except ethane, it gives a, a garlic odor and the remaining are odorless. The density of uh, alkanes as we have seen earlier, alkane and alkane, they are less than uh, water, less than 1. So, they uh, um, they, they, they also they are less polar compounds, they do not mix, mix, uh, mix with water very well, but however, they are well soluble in organic solvents. And if you look at the uh, melting point and boiling point density, So, when you increase the molecular weight, this also increases as we have seen the case of alkene and alkenes if the uh, homologous compounds. And um, if you compare with alkene and alkene show uh, uh, high uh, boiling and uh, 
melting points because they are linear molecule. They can stack each other very easily comparing to alkanes because of that they show uh, high boiling and melting points. So, now let us look at the uh, chemical properties of alkynes. First, uh, let us look at ethane. Just we have discussed um, uh, the sp hybris orbital of carbon is involved uh, the sigma bond formation between with this carbon and as well as with the hydrogen. Uh, in this case, if you look at this one, the sp2 hybrid, uh, sp hybris orbital of carbon overlaps with this uh, s orbital of hydrogen and to form the carbon hydrogen sigma bond. So, if you look at this, uh, this one, the S character is increased. If you see the alkane, it involves sp 3 hybrid orbital, the CH bond formation. In the case of alkene, sp 2 is involved. Here, sp orbital, hybrid orbital is involved in the carbon hydrogen sigma bond formation. So, the S character is here 50 percent. That means, the electron density the electron whichever involved the bond formation is very close to the carbon and the electro in other words the electronegativity of this carbon increases because of the s character uh, is more in this carbon and so the base can easily uh, remove the hydrogen as proton when you treat with base for example when you treat with uh, sodium liquid ammonia it can easily remove this proton. It can produce sodium astralide. And similarly, and this also, um, it can further react another sodium and it can produce similarly this also can, we can react with soda amide. This of course, you can react with alkyl halide, then you can couple this um, moiety and this is very, very useful reaction. So, this if you compare the acidity of alkynes with alkenes and alkanes, they follow the uh, this order. This is more acidic just I, wish I have uh, told you and this involves uh, the due to the uh, more S character, the electronegativity of this increases and the base can easily remove the hydrogen as a proton and this more acidic and this is less acidic comparing to the alkyne. However, more acidic comparing to alkane. This is the least acidic among all the three hydrocarbons. These two are saturated, unsaturated, this saturated hydrocarbons. So, if you compare between uh, different alkynes and this will be more acidic, comparing to this because you have the methyl group, it can give the electron uh, to this system and if you go further, this will be the least acidic. This is a more acidic comparing to this, this more acidic comparing to that. This is the acidity of acidity order of alkynes. 
So now let us look at some of the uh, uh, important reactions. Addition of hydrogen. Alkynes can readily undergo reaction with uh, uh, hydrogen in the presence of catalysts like palladium, platinum, nickel. It can undergo addition to give alkene. The alkene can be further reduced into alkane. So, it depends upon the catalyst, catalyst system. Suppose if you take alkyne and in the presence of hydrogen, if you use palladium catalyst, a state away it can be reduced into alkane. First, it is uh, converted into alkene, that alkene undergoes further reduction to alkane. If you remember the first class, I have shown you what happens. You see, this uh, uh, hydrogen adsorb on the surface of the uh, finely divided uh, the metal uh, surface and then your alkyne also adsorb. It makes uh, you have the bi bond interaction can with the metal can um, interact and once it is adsorbed in the surface then the hydrogen transferred to the alkyne and then uh, you, uh, you get alkyl uh, metal uh, intermediate that can be further uh, uh, reacted with another hydrogen you get the alkene then in this way the alkene can be further converted into alkane. And so, if you use on the other hand, you can also stop the reaction at this stage and if you use a linear catalyst. The presence of quinoline and what happens is the activity of this catalyst uh, less as soon as you form the alkene, it cannot reduce further alkene to alkane. So, it depends upon the reaction conditions. So, you want to have alkene or alkane, both can be obtained from alkyne and using the catalytic hydrogenation reactions where uh, the hydrogen adds the same side of the carbon-carbon uh, triple bond is in addition the reaction stereo specific we have seen uh, during the discussion on the alkenes as well as alkanes. And also alkenes can al alkanes can also be reduced to alkenes uh, with the trans uh, stereochemistry using sodium liquid ammonia. This we have seen uh, during the reaction of uh, the preparation of uh, trans alkenes. The next reaction is, so addition with halogen. Alkynes readily undergo uh, reaction with the halogen, you can uh, when you treat for example with the bromine, it can undergo addition with this uh, carbon-carbon triple bond, you can form the 1 to dibromoethene. Uh, so, in this case the vicinal both uh, carbons uh, have bonded with this uh, uh, bromine. This addition reaction is electrophilic addition reaction and uh, just we have seen the last class it uh, undergoes addition you make bromonium intermediate then it attacks you get this uh, di 1 to dibromo compound. This can also further undergo reaction with another bromine and you can have tetra bromo ethane 1 1 dibromo 2 2 dibromo ethane you can uh, make this compound 
and uh, this, uh, this involves electrophilic addition reaction. The addition of hydrogen halide. The mechanism is similar to whatever we have seen yesterday uh, to alkenes and in the case of um, hydrogen halide, let us take propane as example. When you treat propane with hydrogen, hydrogen bromide, it can produce uh, 2 to tibromo uh, propane. Uh, in this case, if the reaction goes via marganic product, what happens? Uh, first, uh, one of the HBr reacts. First, the formation of uh, uh, vinyl bromide takes place. Once you form this one, this can further undergo reaction. With another HBr, Br minus this can react with this carbocation to give if you look at this uh, this is called a geminal dibromide and if you have uh, the adjacent carbon atoms this is called vicinal bromide, vicinal dibromide. So, uh, just we first we have seen the addition of hydrogen, then we have seen the halogen uh, where you can introduce uh, uh, you can make tetra halo compound and next uh, what we have seen addi uh, addition of uh, hydrogen halide using this method you can make uh, uh, geminal dihalo compound and both uh, halogen under uh, rea uh, th this reaction takes place via uh, marganic addition. The next example is addition of water. As we have seen uh, the last class, uh, this alkane also can undergo addition with water can give uh, a carbonyl compound. Uh, let us take uh, this as the example. propane when you react with uh, water, it can undergo addition reaction when you heat around uh, 50 to 60 degrees Celsius, the water undergoes addition as we have seen just now. Uh, uh, form this intermediate which is not stable it can isomerize into ketone acetone.
So alkyne uh, depends upon the alkyne. If uh, terminal alkyne, it can be in this case, it can be, can be converted into uh, a stone. Suppose if you take ethane, if you do hydration, you will get acetaldehyde. This is very important reaction. So, in the presence of HaSO4 and sulfuric acid, and alkane can undergo addition with water the, uh, to give uh, this uh, enol form, which can isomerize to give uh, the carbonyl compound. The next example is osmolysis. So, alkane can undergo reaction with ozone for example uh, if you treat uh, react this compound with the ozone it can undergo uh, reaction with the ozone to give ozonide this ozonide when you react with water Let us take uh, two butane. So you can you can uh, get this uh, ozonide intermediate. This, when you react with the water, it can undergo cleavage to give this diketone. So, this of course, when you treat with uh, different reagent for oxidase, hydrogen peroxide can be further converted into carboxylic acid. Therefore, if you have the alkyne, alkyne uh, can react with ozone to give the ozonide that can be further reacted with water to get the uh, one to dicarbonyl uh, compound. This is also a very uh, useful reaction uh, synthetic chemistry. The last example is polymerization reaction. So, two kinds of polymerization reactions are possible with the alkyne and one is a linear For example, acetylene undergo polymerization and certain conditions to give the polymer. This is a general formula. If you look at it, they are a conjugated system. You have the double bond, single bond, double bond like this. Therefore, they are, they are good conductors and we can use these are less weight comparing to metals and they use as good conductors. Uh, this is an example for uh, linear polymers and also they can react to give cyclic compound. For example, when you uh, react together to give benzene. This very important example to convert uh, aliphatic 
compound to aromatic compound. For example, if you take uh, this uh, the alkyne, when you uh, around uh, 600 degrees Celsius, they can undergo trimerization to give benzene. This very useful reaction to make uh, benzene derivatives and uh, to make uh, the corresponding um, um, uh, compounds which is useful uh, in dyes and other uh, application parts. And instead of uh, simple ethane, you can also use uh, for example, propyne. Suppose if you heat uh, this uh, compound, they can also undergo trimerization under these conditions. to give this uh, uh, trimethyl substituted benzene. This is a very useful reactions. So, let us summarize uh, whatever we have studied today. So, first we have seen the structure of carbon-carbon uh, triple bond, the nomenclature, uh, isomerism. Then we have seen the preparation of alkynes and physical properties, then chemical properties. In the chemical properties, we have seen the acidity of alkynes, then we have seen uh, some uh, common reactions. For example, and alkyne can be reduced into alkenes or alkanes and the reaction is stereo specific. Uh, if you want to make um, cis alkene, you can do hydrally hydrogenation and using palladium uh, Lindler catalyst, you can make uh, cis alkene. If you want to make trans alkene, uh, you can use the sodium liquid ammonia. Yesterday, we have in the last class, we have discussed about the mechanism, it, uh, it goes via single electron uh, transfer reactions. And on the other hand, if you use uh, like finely divided palladium platinum nickel uh, based catalyst, the hydrogen can uh, further uh, react, undergo addition with alkene, uh, that catalyst more uh, effective comparing the Lindler catalyst the alkane can be uh, directly reduced into alkanes. Next, we have seen the addition of halogen and alkane can undergo uh, reaction with uh, two molecules of uh, halogen can give the tetra halo compound. And it can also undergo reaction with hydrogen halide, for example, HBr. It goes via electrophilic addition reaction and it follows the Marconica rule. You can get geminal dihalo compound. For example, if you add uh, hydrogen bromide, you can get uh, both, uh, you can add both bromine atoms and the same carbon atom. For example, if you take uh, propyne, you can get 2 to dibromopropane. This is a very useful reaction. Then we have seen uh, hydration. It can also like uh, uh, that uh, reaction with hydrogen halide, it can also uh, undergo addition with uh, water, it is also electrophilic addition reaction, it follows a Marconica rule and you can convert into carbonyl compound. And it depends on the substrate, you can get aldehyde or ketone. Uh, this reaction is usually carried out at moderate temperature. Then we have seen ozonolysis. You can also uh, convert alkyne to dicarbonyl compound and you can, uh, it, uh, the alkyne undergo addition with uh, uh, ozone, you form the ozonide. That can be further uh, reacted with the appropriate reagent to get uh, uh, the uh, respective compound. And for example, if you treat with water, you get the dihalo, dicarbonyl uh, compound and if you use hydrogen peroxide, it can be further cleaved into get to get uh, uh, dicarboxylic acids. And the last part of the uh, lecture we have seen and this uh, uh, the ethane is very important uh, compound to make uh, new organic compounds and materials. And we see this is industry uh, producers 
um, uh, ethane from, uh, uh, from the reaction of calcium oxide and uh, carbon. Uh, so, the calcium oxide can react with uh, carbon to generate calcium carbide. That calcium carbide, when you treat with water, it can give the uh, ethane uh, gas. And this is a very important uh, uh, start, uh, precursor for various organic uh, uh, compounds. And this, uh, for example, uh, it can, uh, you can make linear uh, polymerization, it can give the conjugated polymers, uh, which is very good uh, conductor, uh, widely used uh, for various applications. And you can also, this is uh, 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 weight, uh, the light, it, uh, they have light weight comparing to the metals. And then we have seen also, they can also undergo trimerization to give benzene and the related compounds, which are also very important uh, in dyes and other uh, uh, aromatic uh, compounds in pharmaceutical industries. Uh, with this, I conclude my lecture. Thank you very much.